Hi, fam. Welcome back. Hope you guys are having a great day. I'm Joe. I'm Dan. We're back with another reaction. It's movie time. What are we playing, Dan? So we have last month's poll winner, American Psycho. Absolutely, we do. Congratulations to all those of you who picked the winner there. Let's go see what this is about. I'm interested to finally watch this fully all the way through. Uh, you'll enjoy it. I'm sure. Cheers to you, fam. Enjoy. Oh, no. Okay, it's a dish. I knew it was something like that. But what's the sauce? Hold on, Jared Leto's in this? Apparently so. Wow. God, I hate this place. The Chick's Restaurant. Is that Reed Robinson over there? It's Paul Allen. They don't have a good bathroom to do coke in. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's important to your dining experience. They're yuppies, man. What do you want? Speaking of reasonable, they're only 570. I bet. Look at all the platinum cards. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> for things in the 50s. Right. A little bribe to get in, okay. Stony on the rocks. It's a cash bar. It's only $25. $25? You're a ugly bitch. I want to stab you to death and then play around with your blood. That's rude. She didn't hear a damn bit of that. Yeah, the music's too loud. In the morning, if my face is a little puffy, I'll put on an ice pack while doing my stomach crunches. In the shower, I use a water-activated gel cleanser and a honey almond body scrub. And on the face, an exfoliating gel scrub. You are so extra. <laughs> Nobody cares about your daily routine, man. Fifi was talking to us about this in the book. Yeah. How it goes deep into his... into things like this. Yeah. There is no real me. Only an entity. I simply am not there. Oh, I want that. I want. I want to try that out. The that face, face mask. mask. Yeah. I thought you said you wanted to try out sociopathy. No, no. <laughs> you can keep that. Okay. okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to be confusing. Fam. <laughs> no. Aerobics class. Sorry. Any messages? Aerobics class. My ass. I need reservations for two at Arcadia at eight o'clock on Thursday. You look nice today. Don't wear that outfit again. Wear a dress, a skirt or something. You're prettier than that. That was really misogynistic. Yeah. During courtship, the male frigate Do you actually do work or are you just going to watch Jeopardy? <laughs> I don't see him working. I want this life, man, where it's like you go through your normal routine, but this happens anyway. I go to work just to watch TV. Why not? All right. Reese Witherspoon? I hate that job anyway. I see why you just don't quit. Because I want to fit in. You're not so, doing a good job. I'm about to say, who cares what people think of you? You're getting paid to sit down and do nothing. Just be happy. Hell yeah. I'm fairly guys. certain that Timothy Bryce and Evelyn are having an affair. I'm having an affair with Courtney Rawlinson. <laughs> She's usually operating on one or more psychiatric drugs. Tonight, I believe it's Xanax. <laughs> Jesus. She's engaged to Lewis Carruthers, the biggest doofus in the business. This is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> These are the worst people. This is a very uncomfortable moment. A little bit. Strange man walks up to you in the middle of the night. You can't oh, bleach oh, a oh, out of the question. Two, yeah, I can only get these sheets in Santa Fe. These Why the hell? What What have you done? It's awfully red. I will kill you. I, yeah. I, listen, I have a lunch meeting at Hubert's in 20 <laughs> minutes. Ronald Ronald My God. Patrick? Hi, Patrick. I thought that was you. Hello. They really are the best. Then why can't they get these stains out? Oh, what are those? Cranberry juice, cran apple. Mm. Uh huh. Maybe we could do lunch one day next week. What I'm... about a Saturday? Next Saturday? Sure. Can't, I'm afraid. Of... Well, why'd you bring it up? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's so fake. Waiting for Lewis to call me. He said he called tonight. Pumpkin? Patrick? It's <laughs> 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 Oh, the pre-internet days. Where you actually had to own these damn things? Yeah. yeah. I'm thinking Dorcia. Dorcia is nice. I know it's a little late, but is it possible to reserve a table for two at eight or 8.30, perhaps? <laughs> really? You have to be rude about it. You could just say no. Yeah. Good Lord. Oh, no. Not not in public. Really? It's embarrassing. This is Dorcia? Good evening. Yes, dear. As far as you know. Courtney. Courtney. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have the peanut butter soup with smoked duck and mashed squash. New York matinee called it a playful but mysterious little dish. Okay, whatever you say, I guess. That's a wonderful suit. It looks so soft. <clears throat> Your compliment was sufficient. <laughs> Jeez. How the hell are you? Alan has mistaken me for this dickhead Marcus Halberstram. <laughs> 
So how's Cecilia? Oh, that's Jared Leto. She's a great girl. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Looks so different in an actual suit. Wow, you, you almost passed for a regular person. <laughs> right. New card. What do you think? Very nice. Kind of basic. It's very cool, Bateman, but that's nothing. Look at this. That is really nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Let's see Paul Allen's card. Look at that subtle off-white coloring. It looks just like yours, Patrick. <laughs> they all look very much alike, don't yeah. they? <laughs> It even has a watermark. That's beyond obsessive. <laughs> so these guys actually work or they just stand around all day comparing each other's business acumen? That's that's what business looked like back in the day. Jesus. They had people for work. Okay? I guess so. <laughs> oh, by the way, fam, I've got Patrick Bateman's freaking business card. I'll show it to you here in the afterthoughts. You want some uh, money? Some food? Yes, please. You know how bad you smell? You reek of shit. Did you know that? You can't just tell somebody that. Hmm? Oh my god. <gasps> oh no. No! no! I didn't know he did that! Jesus, man. You're sick. What the hell? I feel lethal. On the verge of frenzy. I think my mask of sanity is about to slip. You don't look very sane. Say I'm a psychopath without saying I'm a psychopath. Right. Yeah. Hamilton! Going to Nell's limos out front. We should have dinner. Well, then let's do it, Marcus. Patrick, why is he calling you Marcus? Because <laughs> nobody knows each other's names, apparently. They're all self centered douchebags, that's why. <laughs> JMB straight and a corona. Double absolute martini. Would you like to hear the specials? Not if you want to keep your spleen. Damn. Man's just trying to do his job. That's what happens when you think you're on top of the world and nobody can touch you. Mm -hmm. I like to dissect girls. Did you know I'm utterly insane? Evelyn. Great ass. Goes out with that loser Patrick Bateman. What a dork. <laughs> oh, no. oh, no. Wait, you actually... <laughs> ah! Ah! Oh, he's going to kill you. Newspaper yeah. and the furniture's covered. You like Huey Lewis in the news? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Who doesn't? The whole album has a clear, crisp sound that really gives the songs a big boost. That gives the scene a big boost. <laughs> what did he just take? I didn't get a chance to I read didn't all see that. Either. A prescription of some sort. He's been compared to Elvis Costello <laughs> for their most accomplished album, Hip to Be Square. A song Jeez, what is that dance? <laughs> I'm going to start doing it now. <laughs> God. Hey, Paul! Ah! Oh, oh, my God. Try getting a reservation at Dorkin now, you stupid bastard! <laughs> oh, my God. God. Okay, he's dead. <laughs> well, he had to let some rage out, didn't he? Ugh. <sighs> Wow. Just straight wow. I wanted this guy to die, too. I didn't actually want to do it. Right. <laughs> okay. Just jagging a body through the, through the lobby. With a blood trail? <laughs> a guard. <laughs> Maybe y'all should worry about that? No? Not the first time we've seen Marcus do this. Oh, God. Okay. Patrick? Patrick! This is my very good friend, Patrick Bateman. Lewis is having a damn affair, too. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you get that overnight bag? Oh, no. Jean-Paul Gaultier. Wow. You're even using high-class products to dispose of bodies. Because <laughs> that's all he's got is high-class products. Did you see the axe? It's the yeah. shiniest thing I've ever seen. Right? The Pretty brand spanking new. Yeah. There is a moment of sheer panic when I realize that Paul's apartment overlooks the park and is obviously more expensive than mine. That's all you cared about. <laughs> yes. He's tired of Paul Allen one-upping him. I'm pretty convinced he's not the only psychopath in this movie. <laughs> I'm pretty sure all these guys in the suits are psychopaths. Yeah. It's time for Paul to take a little trip. Hi, this is Paul. Been called away to London for a few days. Meredith, I'll call you when I get back. <laughs> wow. Let's see if that actually works. See, like, the pleasures and tastes these guys have had? Yeah. I imagine everybody's used to their BS. Lady oh my god. You need more soothing music like that. I've actually got this saved on a playlist somewhere. Do you? <laughs> yes. I'm Donald Kimball. Pat Bateman. I'm sorry to barge in on you like this. I, mean, I know how busy you guys can get. <laughs> yeah, they're busy, all right. <laughs> so, what's the topic of discussion? The disappearance of Paul Allen. Oh. Your address? The American Gardens Building, West 81st Street. Nice. Very nice. No, it's not, not as, as Paul good Allen. As Paul yeah. Allen. yeah. <laughs> He was part of that whole Yale thing. What do you mean, Yale thing? Well, I think, for one, that he was 
probably a closet homosexual who did a lot of cocaine. <laughs> oh, God. Yale thing. It's <laughs> like a Harvard person talking. Do you have any witnesses or fingerprints? Well, there's a message on his answering machine that says he went to London. But has anyone seen him in London? Actually, yes. Hmm. What? <laughs> what? Did you see him? Now, Stephen Hughes said he saw him at a restaurant there. He mistook a Herbert Ainsworth for Paul, so... <laughs> These guys really don't know each other. It's just strange. One day someone's walking around alive and then... Nothing. People just disappear. Yeah, people don't just disappear. <laughs> Texas Chainsaw <laughs> Massacre. That's what you work out to, huh? We get a lot of his routine, don't we? Mm-hmm. So what I'm learning is routines are psychotic. Or psychos are, have routines. Yes. Maybe maybe that too, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen you around here. Do you want to come to my apartment or not? I'm not supposed to, but I can make an exception. Did you take a credit card? <laughs> really? My name's Paul Allen. Got that? <laughs> You're Christy. You're to respond only to Christy. Oh my god. He's still trying to cover things up. That is a very sick sense of humor. Seems like it, huh? Thank you. Send her up. Christy, get out and dry off. Choose a robe. Not the Bichon. <laughs> Just for that, I'm putting the Bichon on. <laughs> Don't listen to this guy. He's crazy. I like the Ted, though. Oh, yeah. I'm Paul. How good of you to come. Not quite blonde, are you? More dirty blonde. I'm going to call you Sabrina. <laughs> Whatever, man. Who else are we inviting to this party? <laughs> Perhaps uh, Marcus Halberstrom, huh? Why not? Don't you want to know what I do? No. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> I work on Wall Street. I'm Pierce and Pierce. Have you heard of it? No. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like Phil Collins? <laughs> <laughs> Since the release of their 1980 album, Duke. Not this shit again. <laughs> I really didn't understand any of their work. It was on Duke where uh, Phil Collins' presence became more apparent. I've never had a problem with this music. <laughs> right, I haven't either. I don't know where this shit is coming from. I don't need a lecture on Phil Collins. I literally don't think these are any of his own thoughts. I think he's getting all these out of It magazine. Oh, God. It'd be funny if he was. Sabrina, remove your dress. In terms of lyrical craftsmanship... He's going to record this shit. Mm-hmm. Some workout material. Phil Collins' solo career seems to be more commercial and therefore more satisfying in a narrower way. Where are we going with all this? <laughs> this is the studio. Jeez. Unbelievable. Living out his fantasies. He's got the money to do it. I don't know. You think this is a fantasy or you think this is him trying to cover up some uh, loose ends? Both. In the story. Probably both okay. The reason you can't have fun while you're trying to cover yourself. Fair. Can we go now? We're not through yet. Oh my god. Did he hit he beat him up. He beat him up. Did you see? Yeah, she's all bloodied. Wow. What the hell did you do? I want to get your opinion on something. It's my business card. I decided to get a new one. Too. Oh, no. So I see you do have a death wish. Freaking Patrick Bateman will not be one up right. by anybody. <laughs> well, there's another one I gotta kill. Is that all you ever have to contribute, Van Patten? What about dinner? Cheer up there, Bateman. What's the matter? No shiatsu this morning? Touch him, draw back a stump. Hey, hold on there, little buddy. Over a business card? This guy's got serious control issues. Oh my. With his stick out. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? God. Patrick, I've seen you looking at me. Oh, oh no. no. <laughs> I've noticed your hot body. <laughs> He's washing the gloves. <laughs> now he feels violated. <laughs> what is it? Where are you going? I've got to return some video. <laughs> oh no. He just yeah. now zipped up too. Oh, God. <laughs> 
Oh. <laughs> no. You gonna ruin this man's reputation? <laughs> well, it did not at all go the way he thought it was no, gonna go. No, it did not. <laughs> What's he gonna do? Just strangle him there in the damn bathroom? In a public restaurant where everybody saw you walk into the bathroom? Yeah. When was the last time you were with Paul Allen? We'd gone to a new musical called Oh Africa, Brave Africa. It was a laugh riot. What? <laughs> Don't sound like it. <laughs> a laugh riot? <laughs> with a title like that? Yeah. If you could try and pin down where you were, it would make my job a lot easier. Absolutely. Here we loose in the news. <laughs> 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 I just bought it on my way here. You heard it? What? Yes. Never. Not a big music fan, huh? He was too black sounding for me. <laughs> Whatever. I don't understand. You do things because you want people to like you. Right. And now you're going to not do that because you don't want to get too close to him? <laughs> He's weird. There's this theory now that if you can catch the AIDS virus through having sex with someone who's infected, then you can catch anything. Oh. Alzheimer's. Uh, That's right. AIDS was just now a thing. Well, this was 2000. It was a thing for a little bit before this. This is 1980s. Oh, okay. Well, Why do you think they're listening to all the 80s music? Uh, that's, that's just to be a good taste. <laughs> no. <laughs> and they're doing coke like it's going out of style. Oh, God. What? It's a milligram of sweetener. <laughs> oh, no. Definitely weak, but I have a feeling if we do enough of it, we'll be okay. <laughs> well. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to do drugs. Most people waiting in line to do coke in the bathroom. <laughs> Somebody's actually in there taking shit, too, probably. <laughs> That'd be me. <laughs> you guys keep it down over there. <laughs> they passed me a lot. <laughs> Ask me a question. So what do you do? I'm into, uh, well, murders and executions, mostly. <laughs> He's honest. Most guys I know who work in mergers and acquisitions really don't like it. He loves it. <laughs> she didn't say the same thing. You think I'm dumb. You think all models are dumb. I really don't. That's okay. I don't mind. There's something sweet about you. It's he, probably the line of sweetener he did. Yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> oh no. What'd you do? It's with a lock of hair. A memento before he got rid of the body? Probably. Doing the crossword? <laughs> what? what? I'm sure there's more to it than that. All work and no play, huh? Would you like to accompany me to dinner? Anywhere you want, just say it. I can get us in anywhere. Dorcia? Oh, no. The one place he can't get into? If he goes as Paula Allen, maybe. Mm, maybe. Uh, Dorcia, yes? Yeah, can you take two tonight at, well, let's say, nine o'clock? Oh, we're totally booked. Two at nine? Perfect. <laughs> See you then. <laughs> she don't know that. You didn't give a name. They know me. Uh-huh. B.S. Yeah, she's on to you. Gene? Oh. Oh. Sorbet? Wow. Thanks, Patrick. I'd love some. No, I don't think you would. <laughs> Do you want a bite? I'm on a diet. Well, maybe we shouldn't go out to dinner. I don't want to ruin your willpower. That's all right. I'm not very good at controlling it anyway. Oh. Uh, we know that's true. Yeah. Did you know that uh, Ted Bundy's first dog, a collie, was named Lassie? What's that? Duct tape. I need it for uh, taping something. I guess you don't like hearing her talk after all. <laughs> I guess not. And yet you keep asking her questions. What is he holding? Does it matter? <laughs> a nail gun? She could say, I just want to have a meaningful relationship with someone special. Hmm. Patrick, I hope you're not out there with some little number you picked up because oh, you're mine, Mr. Bates. Uh oh. Ruining the mood. Do you want me to go? I don't think I can control myself. It's in your best interest to leave. Yes. I think if you stay, I think I might hurt you. You don't want to get hurt, do you? No, I guess not. I don't want to get bruised. He's giving her the choice this time? What changed your mind here? The whole message probably deflated the moment. Oh. <laughs> Where do you place Paul that night? According to his date book, he had dinner with Marcus Helperstrom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, and he denies it, though, at first. What? Be sure. But he denied it. Yes. Wait, is there an actual Marcus Halberstam? Is it one of those dudes? Yeah, it's one of the other guys. Okay. Where were you? Where was Marcus? At Atlantis with Craig McDermott, Frederick Dibble, Harry Newman, George Butner, and you. Well, then why are you asking me? Well, you know the answer. He looks like shit. He does. He looks bad. 
Anyway, I'm pretty sure he'll turn up soon or later. To think that one of his friends killed him for no reason whatsoever would be too ridiculous. Isn't that right, Patrick? Yeah, totally ridiculous. This is a very odd moment. Yeah. You look guilty, you know that. You look guilty, but even the detective's acting kind of weird. He's a potential suspect. You're not supposed to be having lunch with him, right? Right. Christy. I'm not so sure about this. I had to go to emergency after last night. Jesus, month. come in the limo and talk to me for a minute. Don't do it. Stay away from him. I say, you made the right decision the first time. Where have you been? Well, I actually might need a little surgery after last time. Oh. You got back in this car? I'm meeting a friend of mine, Elizabeth. I like her. She's a very nice girl. Uh, what the hell? You look really familiar. Did you go to Dalton? I think I met you at the surf bar, didn't I? It was spicy. Well, maybe not with spicy. We definitely at the surf bar. Drugging the alcohol? Oh, yeah. This tastes weird. I would just like to say to you, get it on. <laughs> Patrick, you're a lunatic. You got that right. <laughs> I think it'd be a turn on. Does he do this all the time? More often than you think. You're making me feel weird. Mm. <laughs> That's just getting I, into it. Yeah. Did you know that Whitney Houston's debut LP called simply Whitney Houston? Mm. Not this. Lord. Come on. <laughs> is one of the best, most powerful songs ever written about self-preservation and dignity. Straight out of a magazine. <laughs> I'm telling you. Nobody says this shit. Right. At all. Not even psychopaths. <laughs> I don't give a fuck how crazy they are. <laughs> on to different things here, finally. Yes, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I'd be getting out of here, too. You just noping out for the beatings come? Yes. <laughs> oh. Oh. Is that blood? Yeah, it is. Good God, what are you doing in there? I think, I think you just bit her damn tongue out. Oh, oh my God! God. <laughs> Jesus. Yep, he's gone. <laughs> you just have a room for this? Oh, my God! He is putting it all on Paul Allen. <laughs> There's dead bodies everywhere. Oh! Oh my God. Good Lord. Yes, scream for help. There gotta be somebody else in this building. I don't think there is. I think Paul Allen owns the damn floor. Oh God. He's completely <laughs> lost control. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, you know he's got his shoes, shoes on. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he's going to time this. <laughs> Jesus Christ. No way. There's no way he timed that right. Whoa. No, he did. How did it hit there? I don't know. Especially the way it was flipping. I thought that was going to cut her in half, honestly. Just drawing this at lunch? Using the kid's crayons? I want a firm commitment. <laughs> On the freaking table paper? Where's the detective at when you need him? It's over, Evelyn. It's all over. But your friends are my friends, and my friends he are He has your no friends. friends. And I, I thought about that. You can have them. Do you? Sorry, I just, uh, you're not terribly important to me. Oh, no. Well, you just said right, said it. If you really want to do something for me, then stop making this scene right now. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm leaving. Assess the situation. Man. Yeah, I'm telling you, we don't like public embarrassments, man. We're right. out of here. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. No. Not the kitty. No. Feed me Feed a stray cat. Oh, he's going crazy. <gasps> what? Oh my god. What are you doing? What the hell? Yeah, you're in trouble now. Get on the ground! Put now you're in a shootout? You took one down? We're gonna hunt you down now. What? Okay, this is getting ridiculous. Come on, there's no way! <laughs> <laughs> Even he's surprised by all that. You're like, what was that? <laughs> What's in this gun? That worked out way too well. <laughs> Burning the midnight oil, Mr. Smith? Oh, God. Not Smith. 
Oh my god. Was he just there to take that? I mean, come on. Wait, you're right. Smith? What? Yeah. Where'd Smith come from? And why'd you turn back and kill him? <laughs> Everywhere he goes, he's somebody else, apparently. <sighs> you gotta sign in everywhere. This looks like the last building you were in. They all kind of look alike. Howard, it's Bateman, Patrick Bateman. For my lawyers, but I think you should know, I've killed a lot of people. Oh, no. <laughs> Some escort girls in an apartment uptown. Some homeless people, maybe five or ten. Jesus. I killed Bethany, my old girlfriend with a nail gun. I killed another girl with a chainsaw. <laughs> I killed Paul Allen with an axe in the face. I guess I've killed maybe 20 people. Maybe 40. Good Lord. I have uh, tapes of a lot of it. <laughs> I even, um, I ate some of their brains. Oh, oh God. God. The man's Hannibal Lecter. Oh, my God. I mean, I guess I'm a pretty sick guy. So, <sighs> if you get back tomorrow, I may show up at Harry's bar. So, you know, keep your eyes open. You told all that to an answering machine? There's no way. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's just going through his routine again like nothing happened. Are you back at Paul Allen's again? Jesus, you are. I mean, are they gonna, ever going to arrest you or what? What? Didn't this just happen yesterday? I don't think it's his place. That's Paul Allen's place. Like he's still selling it already. The what bodies are gone. Yeah, what happened to everything? Should the bodies be gone right now? I mean, in, in no, this place should be taped off, right? Right. Can I help you? I'm looking for... Paul Allen's place. Doesn't he live here? No, he doesn't. Oh. <laughs> I think you should go now. What? I want to know what happened here. Don't make any trouble, please. I suggest you go. This just turned very weird. Don't come back. I won't. See, why would he? Don't worry. That, that could not have worked out any flipping better. Patrick Bateman's office. Gene, I need help. Patrick, is that you? I don't think I'm gonna make it, Gene. What is it, Patrick? Are you all right? You're sounding so sad. He's not just a psychopath. He's clinical. Right. He's lost it. No wonder he's on those uh, freaking meds. It's like he can't believe anything going on anymore. Like, why is he not in jail? Yeah. The book of PB here. <laughs> Oh, some interesting John. So, uh, did you get my message? Oh, is that your attorney? Jesus, yes! That was hilarious. That was you, wasn't it? Naturally. Bateman killing Alan and the escort girls. That's fabulous. He doesn't believe you. By the way, Davis, how's Cynthia? You're still seeing her, right? Wait, her. Afraid not. <laughs> your joke was amusing. But come on, man. Bateman is such a dork. What? Such a boring, spineless lightweight. Wait, this... Is he really telling people he's different people? I'm Patrick Bateman. I killed Paul Allen, and I liked it. But that's simply not possible. I don't understand what's going on right now. I don't either. Why not, you stupid bastard? Because I had dinner with Paul Allen twice in London, just ten days ago. No, you... What? ...didn't. Now, if you'll excuse me. Did you imagine the whole damn thing? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Is this is all his fantasies that he was having while he was in the office. Good lord. You definitely see him going off the deep end. Did you just fantasize about it? <laughs> My hopes for this country are what are you so zany about. <laughs> I'm just a happy camper. <laughs> Rocking and a rolling. When you realize you just got away with right. everything. There are no more barriers to cross. All the mayhem I have caused and my utter indifference toward it, I have now surpassed. So I guess there's nowhere for you to go from here but down. And I do not hope for a better world for anyone. In fact, I want my pain to be inflicted on others. Jesus. But even after admitting this, I gain no deeper knowledge of myself. No new knowledge can be extracted from my telling. This confession has meant nothing. My goodness. Okay, then. So you're just unhappy with life now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
So just a quick uh, step back into reality for two <laughs> seconds here. Okay. Here's the business card, guys. Got Patrick Bateman himself. I don't know if that's in focus. It may never be. But there it is, guys. He's actually a VP. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Pierce and Pierce. This is a 555 number right there. <laughs> Why wouldn't it Go be? Go figure. <laughs> yeah. Guys, we got this at Fri Texas Frightmare Weekend. We were waiting in line, and somebody was actually cosplaying Patrick Bateman with the uh, with the whole uh, sheet over him before he was about to bring the axe down on Paul uh, on Paul Allen. Yeah. And uh, we exchanged business cards. I gave him a Cocktail Flicks business card, and he gave me that one. Right. He even gave me the whole uh, the whole like uh, rundown of like what color everything was. <laughs> it's pretty good. And this is like pretty damn authentic. It's like same paper, everything. It looks pretty. It looks pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. So if I ever run into uh, Christian Bale, he's total. I'm totally gonna get him to sign that. Right. So, what do you think actually happened at the end of this movie? Do you think a he actually went around and killed a bunch of people and got away with it because everybody was so self-centered that they didn't care. Or B, he was just losing his mind and this was all in his head. I suppose it's your interpretation to think about, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, Well, we saw him you know, viciously killing these people, but at the end, the damn lawyer there said he had lunch with Paul Allen in London. Right. And I'm like, how is this possible when we saw him bring the axe down on you? And then, But we also saw, what was her name, Janine? Yeah going through his day planner that he'd been drawing pictures in, and it looked like he was just drawing out fantasies. Maybe really all we saw acting out on screen was just fantasies. Right, because he doesn't seem like he's doing any work when he's actually at work, so maybe he's just sitting there daydreaming, you know, all the stuff he'd want to do to other people around him. So there's always that possibility. As far as the, the whole, the lawyer met with Paul Allen thing, bear in mind, you know, he's been using Paul Allen's name this whole time. People don't know each other. They're constantly getting each other confused with other people. Who's to say that he thought he was having lunch with Paul Allen, but with somebody else? Maybe. And I mean, how many times did we see him run into another building and somebody referred him to a, some, uh, as a different name than Patrick Bateman? Like Mr. Smith or something. Yes. Like, clearly they don't know who these people are. Like, they, as far as they know, it's some guy in a suit. They all just kind of look alike. Well, then did he actually kill the prostitute? See, that's the one that kind of confuses me because the body was found like at the bottom of where you were staying at. There were all those bodies, supposedly in Paul Allen's apartment. Why did they nobody? They were just gone. Yeah. Yeah. Like, why did nobody notice that those were there? Why did nobody, you know, think to check that? Why did nobody investigate the fact that there was a dead prostitute in the lobby of a building? Well, wait. Wasn't there a detective trying to break, get down to the bottom of a, uh, of Paul Allen's disappearance anyway? Right. And that never got concluded. Because apparently he's not never been dead. Somebody said they'd seen him there, but then they said, I think part of his evidence said somebody had seen Paul Allen in, in uh, London. Mm -hmm. But then I guess they found out that that wasn't true, but now it is true. So I'm really confused here. Well, well, maybe maybe Patrick's plan worked and they actually did blame all the bodies on Paul Allen. They found him inside his apartment. They just figured, well, I guess it's better that Paul's not here. Because didn't the detective say the family is trying to keep it quiet? about his disappearance. Maybe they figured he was a serial killer. He killed these people, left their bodies there, and then just kind of went on the lam. Then would that suggest that Patrick Bateman, or whoever he is, could be fantasizing living vicariously through Paul Allen? I don't know. I say there's so Maybe many... he hates Paul Allen so much for actually doing the things he wants to do. Mm -hmm. Maybe because everybody, everybody suggests that Patrick Bateman has no spine in this, right? Whenever right. you're talking directly to him, but they suggest they they talk like supposedly he's a spineless person. Mm -hmm. Maybe Paul Allen killed these people. I don't know. And Patrick is just kind of mad at him for doing the things he didn't have the guts to do. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know if it, maybe I'm lost. Maybe we're completely off on that. I don't know. There's so much about this movie that's open to interpretation. It could be any number of scenarios. I have no clue. I don't either. I have no clue. It was a very entertaining movie. Like, inc like you went into the mind of complete chaotic psychopath there right he probably uses routines to keep the psycho uh, from coming out mm -hmm. because it's like okay you can grasp reality when you're in the routines it's when you're not in the routines that you fall apart i see i kind of feel like the uh the routines helped with some of the psychosis too because what is his routine like he he hangs out with a bunch of people that he clearly hates who he constantly sees as uh competitors in the world of business sure well yeah <laughs> 
But, so, but I mean, what are they actually doing? <laughs> they're not doing anything, and that's kind of the point is, you know, he's getting upset over all this trivial stuff. Oh, this person has a nicer suit than me. Oh, this person has a nicer business card than me. Stuff that doesn't really matter, but for some reason he obsesses about it. And it's something that he deals with every day. He goes out with these people every day. He puts himself in that situation. It's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Like, if, you, if you're so bothered by these people, why don't you just stay to yourself? If he stayed to himself, he'd probably go deeper into a psychotic tendencies, I think, and he'd probably do it and probably be even worse. But I, I kind of feel like, though, being around those people was bringing it out of him. Like, he almost killed that one guy in the bathroom just having met him in person. Mm. Well, well, let me ask you this. What do you think happened? What's your, what's your interpretation? I'm going with the interpretation that he's actually just crazy, and he's, he's imagining all this stuff happening. I mean, some of this stuff may be real. You know, who's to say what is or isn't? He might have killed that homeless guy and his dog, for real. Maybe, and that's the thing, you know, some of these people, it's going to be easy to kill them and get away with it. Like, nobody's going to investigate a homeless guy getting murdered. Uh, unfortunately, no. A prostitute, you know, not the most important thing in the world, but she was kind of in a public place. This is a building where other people live. You'd think somebody would be interested in what happened. The Paul Allens of the world would be very difficult to hide. Paul over. Allen's a businessman, you know, somebody's going to care about that death. I kind of feel like that, you know, he was just kind of getting into his own head, imagining stuff happening, and that it never actually happened. Talk about going into the mind of a serial killer there. Yeah. I can see where that's that situation where, you know, you fantasize about doing something that you wouldn't do in real life. He's the kind of person who doesn't really fit in with these others, right? He doesn't care about status. He doesn't care about wealth. That He's kind of pressured to because of the, the way that the environment that he lives in. Okay. But on the whole, he doesn't really care about that stuff. He just cares about doing his own thing. And I think it's eating at him on the inside, being around all these self-centered people. Right. I, I, think I, can, I think I can get behind that. The other thing that I wanted to point out there, this whole world felt fake, like the whole time. Mm -hmm. Like nothing about it felt like you were in sync with any kind of reality, unless you were the people doing the cleanup or washing the sheets. Something like that. That that was. Those were the only real people that it felt like. Everybody else almost felt like you know, call it a grand illusion. Mm -hmm. I guess. Well, you know, they, they say that about people on Wall Street too. They say that, like, they really don't care about Not the greater with picture. The reality, yeah, yeah, they just kind of do their own thing. The only thing they worry about is the numbers and making the money and all that. They don't care about the rest of the world if it's falling apart or not. We didn't even see that here. No. We just saw all that we ever saw them talk about was where can we get a reservation. Right, and that's the thing, you know. These are probably not good people, but the only thing that they seem to be interested in is, you know, hey, where can we go eat that's going to make us look good? Yeah. And it's like, man, once you, what, where do you go to after so long, you know? Yeah. At, that, at some point, you know, there's nowhere else to go. Been to them all. And maybe, maybe I think the big thing is they want to get into the most, like, exclusive thing that there is. Or I guess that's the big challenge is who can get in, who can get in, you know? Mm -hmm. If you can get in, then... You have the more access than the others, meaning your, I guess, status is higher than the rest of ours. So mm -hmm. that's all they were concerned about was just their status in life. Ultimately, even Patrick Bateman suffered from that as well. Yeah. Uh, his was a little bit more because I think when people actually did have a higher status, he fantasized about killing them, <laughs> Yeah, as you say. So maybe that's where that comes from, but, but, it, but I don't think it was exclusively to that because he... We saw him killing people that whose status was incredibly low, like mm -hmm. the homeless guy and his dog. Well, and I think that was a way of him establishing power, too, because if he's killing people who have a, high, have a higher status, it's because he doesn't like them being above him. It's a jealousy thing. And yeah. so he also wouldn't respect people who are below him, either. He's like, I'm at the top, no exceptions. Okay, good. I'm glad we talked about that there, yeah. then, yeah. But the other thing, too, kind of making me think that it's the fantasy thing is the pills, because we both saw that he was taking some kind of drug. Maybe he had gotten off his meds. Maybe. So we only saw him use it, like, what, twice in the film? Yeah, it's like, it finally got it. Finally, it was introduced to us at some point. Yeah. What is this drug? Yeah. I'd venture to say it was antipsychotics. Mm-hmm. Plus, too, if he's hanging out with everybody and doing drugs, who knows what kind of effect that's having on his mind, too. Yeah. Maybe he was, maybe what he was crushing up in that wine with those two girls was his own medicine. I think, I think we saw that, right? Maybe. Maybe that was something like that, and it just had an ulterior effect on him. Could be. It could be something that affects you mentally and makes you hallucinate i think so or in cases like his mm -hmm. it brings you back to reality i suppose it would have i suppose that would be the case if it was designed to bring to bring you on the level yeah then if your mind's that bad like 
what is it going to do to somebody whose mind isn't that bad, you know? Right. I mean, you know, if you're giving it to the prostitute who is already kind of wary of you anyways, yeah, she's going to come to reality real quick and be like, okay, I need to get out of here yeah, before right. this guy does something. Exactly. Okay. Okay, because, yeah, it's, I think I think it's important to note that, too, because there were prescription drugs involved in that. Mm-hmm. So. And then, you know, you're, you're sitting there talking about, too, how he's constantly describing this music and the artists and you know, what he thinks about them intellectually and all that. Exactly. You're right. Like, people don't talk about that in public. Most, pe- most rational people don't. That's why it feels like a fantasy to me, too. Yeah, they just sit there and say, oh, man, I like this song. And right. that's all they're going to say about it. Right. They're not going to sit there and go through and go through a whole Rolling Stone cover on this whole thing. Right, like yeah. Maybe in your head you'll think, about, oh, yeah, I like this song because of so-and-so. Most people you talk to, you don't actually have that deep level of conversation with. No, not even the yuppies of the world. Right. Don't care that much about Huey Lewis in the news and and whatever their album was called. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Or the Duke with Phil Collins. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't get me wrong. He's got a good choice in music, but I don't need the explanation. Right. It's fun watching him. What watching him get into the music, though. I thought mm-hmm. so. All the uh, big debate there aside, I enjoyed that. Jared Leto, you know, you you took me for a ride there, man. I couldn't. I almost didn't recognize you. <laughs> right. So. Like it took a minute, but oh wow, that is you. Yeah, you actually don't look crazy for once. I bet he felt so uncomfortable. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then you put the right people in this movie, okay? right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, God, could you imagine that? That that's him actually being like, "Oh, it was weird being like this." <laughs> For yuppies, it's a you know that's that that's just life. He's like, I felt like the American Psycho in American Psycho, right? I wonder how many yuppies in New York City actually were psychos. Honestly, I imagine a lot of them have, like, narcissistic complex or something else that would qualify as a psychosis. Or they fantasize about really strange things that most people wouldn't. Oh, yeah. I mean, when you've got that much wealth and power... Like, the stuff he's doing with the prostitutes, I could totally see some guys on Wall Street doing that. Oh, yeah. Coked out of their minds, acting like there's no circumstances. Right. Consequences. I'm sorry. Acting like there's no consequences... Yeah. ...for your actions. Yeah. Because you just look at the police and be like, do you know who I am? Kind of thing. Yeah. And it's like, at that point, when you've experienced the things that, as a, I guess, I, I guess as a working class type of person, mm-hmm. would fantasize about, like for, like for us, I think it would just be staying at a place like the Four Seasons, you know, or like a ritzy hotel. Once you, once that becomes a regular occurring reality, mm-hmm. what becomes your fantasy after that? Because things got to progress, right? Right. It's like, once you're at the top, what, what do you look forward to doing? Yeah. I guess you would. I guess you would become a psychopath if it goes too far. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And you're talking about the Four Seasons too. Like the detective said, there was no Four Seasons down there. Like he had all the evidence in the world to say to figure out that Patrick was behind all this stuff, and yet somehow it never comes up. And you never saw him again too. Yeah. It's like he had lunch, and then it was over. Yeah. So many unanswered questions there, but I think it was meant to be that way. Could it also be possible that people were covering up for him? I mean... Like they're saying, okay, he's one of us. He's out there having his yuppie fun. We're going to cover it up so that he, so that nothing happens because he's part of the family. Like his dad owns a business. Before owns- he broke up with Reese Witherspoon, I could see that because I think it was her father that owned the company. Okay, yeah. After, I see no reason why he would. Then maybe it all was all in his head. I don't know. But, you know, he saw two on the machine. The machine said, feed me a stray cat. Like, that's not a real thing. Like, he had to have imagined that. Yeah, just more evidence to the to the latter there. Yeah. There's so much we could go into on this. I don't know if I want to get into a whole conversation on yuppie culture, though. I don't think so. <laughs> that was still a thing when we were growing up, though. I mean, they're still there. They're just not yuppies anymore. They're just douchebags. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think I called it out properly. It's like the reason they're not doing work is because they've already delegated that to somebody else. Mm-hmm. They have people for that. Kind of <laughs> like uh, Bateman there had a secretary for yeah. everything he needed. Yeah. You got people for all the actual work in this world. I understand. I'm sure they all had their secretaries who were actually doing the real work while they just kind of sat around and chit-chatted. Right. And if fiance's father owns that business, Mm -hmm. then he already had it made anyway. Oh, yeah. It's like, yeah, all you had to do was sit back and relax for eight hours a day. Just be there filling the the seat. I understand. They probably gave you the easiest stuff to do so you didn't have to do all that much work. Right. I mean, come on. You're you're freaking VP and all you have to do is sit around. (laughs) fantasizing about killing people i I say you have some free time on your hands i'd say so give that man some emails to answer (laughs) (laughs) it's the 80s they didn't have it get into whenever that came out and give that man some things to answer Mm. fam let's let's end it there i want to hear your thoughts too 
We're gonna we pose the question to you. Did he kill the people or was this all in his head? And like we said too, if you've read the book, you know, give us some insights from that too. That might be helpful in understanding what's going on here a little bit. Oh, absolutely. Fifi, I know, read the book. Mm -hmm. Folks, if you don't remember Fifi, she'll be joining us again once again here soon, guys. We're going to have her on the channel a few times this year, guys, okay? It, well, if she can. She has her own life to live too. Yes. So yes. But uh, we know she's read the book, so I hope she chimes in and gives us some of her insight there. But guys, as always, if you're brand new to this channel, I hope you'll consider subscribing and help us grow. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and hit the bells to receive notifications every time we drop a video. And should you feel compelled to give us a piece of your mind, do so in the comments, guys. While you're at it, take a look at us on our socials. We're on Instagram and TikTok. See what we're up to over there. But as always, this is Cocktail Flicks. I'm Joe. I'm Dan. And we'll catch you on the flip side. Cheers to you, fam. Cheers to you, Dan. Cheers to you, Joe. Later, guys. Where can we get this reservation?